Here's all the proof you need that Ellen DeGeneres is a monster celebrity liar. We're gonna piece together the shocking evidence along with breaking down Ellen's mean body language. That's next. Welcome back to the channel, shakers. Derek Van Shake here. Ellen DeGeneres is the 62-year-old comedian and talk show host who constantly preaches to be kind. Every day I end each show with a reminder to be kind to one another. However, more and more stories, accounts, complaints, and evidence have come out, exposing that Ellen, along with her show's producers, are actually incredibly mean. And we're not talking about Ellen just getting moody or grumpy either. We're talking monster celebrity status, where when cameras aren't recording, certain people aren't allowed to look at her, make eye contact with her, and certainly not speak to her. And that's just the beginning. The stories of how mean Ellen is will surely shock you. The irony, the irony, right? The same person who tells everyone during every show to be kind. I really mean it. I think we, we I'm not just saying it at the end of the show. I want everybody to start a kindness campaign. It's finally coming out that she is one of the meanest people in all of Hollywood and probably the entire world. So we're gonna break down Ellen's body language along with piecing together their shocking evidence to finally reveal rare on-camera moments where Ellen accidentally slipped showing you who she really is. Now, let's get started. I have apple cider and, okay. I, and I have now pickles. How much to be sure that that's apple cider, Ellen? I promise you, I would not do that to you. Okay. Why would I do that to you? Well, I don't know. It's apple cider. <laughs> you, you, you have a baby. Mariah Carey's, for some reason, concerned that Ellen could be giving her alcohol even though she's pregnant. Mariah's concern seems a little odd, doesn't it? But it's not if you know the history of what Ellen tried to do to her. Let's turn back the clock two years. People are saying that uh, that you're pregnant. There's Hollywood rumors and gossip that Mariah Carey is pregnant. Now watch what Ellen does here. There, there's rumors. Don't discuss that. <laughs> um, Mariah gives nervous laughter and makes it clear that she doesn't want to reveal whether she's pregnant or not. Okay, that's where it should have ended. Right? All right, well, you don't have to <laughs> No, that's okay. No, no honestly. You don't have to end. Right. Let's just toast with champagne. Yes, that's Ellen pulling out alcohol to see if she can find out if she's pregnant? Pregnancy is clearly very personal, and Ellen is taking it upon herself to get Mariah to reveal her pregnancy to the world. If people want to speculate with baby bumps and footage, that's just people being curious. But for Ellen to trap someone into revealing it to the entire world for her own personal gain, that's messed up and mean. That's not champagne, because you can't No, it is. Run. Is it really? Yeah, you want to you want to taste it? I can't believe you did this to me, Ellen. What? No, are I, you trying? I'm to not going to ask you if you're pregnant. This or not. Is, let's toast to you not being pregnant. If you're not pregnant, then oh we should. Oh my goodness! Now watch how Mariah tries to divert to try to get out of Ellen's little test. Back to the future. Yeah. You can and really... for both of our futures. Who knows what they hold? Who knows? <laughs> All right, go ahead. Okay, cheers. Yeah, cheers. Because keep in mind, if she absolutely refuses to participate then Ellen and the public will assume she's pregnant. If she participates and even seems to drink a sip, the tabloids will bash her for drinking alcohol while pregnant. What would you do if Ellen put you in that position? I'll tell you what may work to get out of that tough situation. I'll put that in a moron video on my more channel. So you may wanna go and subscribe to my more channel so you don't miss out on that future video. It's too early for me. Yeah. I only drink it after 3 p.m. Yeah. Mm. You're pregnant! <laughs> You're pregnant! No, no pregnant! I just wanted to see how honest my audience was. Any of you could have taken more than one thing, and you didn't. Except for these ladies right here. Hi! Let that be a lesson to you, because you think... And you just need to be a good person just because you want to be a good person. You just need to be a good person just because you want to be a good person. You go sit in that Ellen jail over there right now. A lot of people saying that someone who seems so nice is yeah. not nice at all. Ellen DeGeneres show is under new scrutiny. A toxic work environment, alleged culture of racism, fear and intimidation. What goes on behind the scenes is a far cry from 
what the show represents in their be kind messaging. It's World Kindness Day. Since I preach kindness every day, this is a big one for me. This is like my Super Bowl. And what Ellen DeGeneres herself profits off of. Be kind Ellen box. Be kind candle. Mmm, smells like kindness. Be sure to get your be kind box. Culture of fear and intimidation. What it was like working for Ellen DeGeneres. Toxic, phony, hypocrite, liar. That's what she is. We all walked on eggshells all the time. She would watch Ed go off on people. Ellen would look at Ed and she would laugh. And she said every production needs their dog. Her attack dog. When Ellen says she's not aware of this uh, environment. It's a lie. She's a different person. She's not the person people see in front of the camera. And listen to one another and be kind to one another. This toxic culture that she created in the office has been going on for 16 years. I've been studying kindness for the past 17 years on this show. Multiple allegations that it was a toxic place to work. The horror stories keep coming. Whatever you do, don't be funnier than Ellen. Don't make toast in the bathtub would only speak to the audience when the cameras were rolling. It was freezing cold, so they had us like waiting in a hallway by the bathroom, and it's almost like they forgot about us. Emailed the owner and complained about my chipped nail polish. Not in her food, but on my hands. Remember that clock I gave you? To remind you, time is ticking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh! Hey, look at that. That's going above the bed. But you didn't give it to me. Like, I walked backstage, and somebody back there was like, hey, thanks for being on the show, can I have that? And they took it. Why do we need it? Took it back it? because whoever your next guest was, you replaced the picture and did the same crap to them and nope. embarrassed them. This is a clock, ah! and it's basically to remind him that time is ticking. You turned 30. I did. Ellen is interviewing Dakota Johnson, who was on her show last year. As you'll see, she isn't going to sit back and watch Ellen blatantly lie to her. See if you can pick up on Ellen's signs of deception here. How was the party? I wasn't invited. That's right. We see Ellen's right fingers suddenly start to tap on the armrest faster in nervousness. Along with increasing the rate of her self-comforting massage of her thumb on her knee, lying causes certain emotions. And in body language, we look for signals leading to clusters pointing to those emotions. Incongruent nervousness is quite common because lying is dangerous due to the possibility of getting caught in the lie. Therefore, we'll sometimes notice odd self-comforting holds and touches when lying. Also, did you notice how she said, I wasn't invited? How was the party? I wasn't invited. Yeah, she said it so quickly that she blended those deceptive words together. Since liars typically feel nervousness from lying, they'll sometimes say their lie fast and muffled. Fast because the feeling of lying and the danger of getting caught in a lie is uncomfortable. So they'll sometimes want to shoot out the lie as quickly as possible. How was the party? I wasn't invited. Sometimes muffled because they know lying is wrong and they're not proud to say their deceptive words clearly and confidently. If you're thinking there's a lot of signals of deception, yeah, there are. However, it's important to remember that we use clusters and not random or coincidental touches. And if you make a judgment of someone just based on some random gesture, yes, you're not reading body language. You're just being an idiot. <laughs> Actually, no, that's not the truth, Ellen. You were invited. Ellen is clearly not used to her guests calling her out. Most of them probably just nod and go along with whatever Ellen says. But clearly, not Dakota. Yeah, she keeps calling her out, which seems to reveal a lot about Ellen. Watch. Last time I was on the show, last year, you gave me a bunch of about not inviting you, but I didn't even know you wanted to be invited. All the people that I didn't invite to my birthday yeah, know yeah. that I had a I mean, party. I invited you to mine and you came to mine. Well, you have my number, mm -hmm. so you could have called to invite me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't invite anybody. I didn't really? plan it. Well, who doesn't want to be invited to a party? Well, I didn't even know you liked me. <laughs> Someone buy that woman a beer. <laughs> Keep in mind, at this point in 2019, the horror stories of working for and being interviewed by Ellen hadn't fully come out to the public yet. Ellen was still riding her deceptive be kind wave. Dakota saying that surely would have raised a lot of eyebrows then. Have you ever heard a guest say that she wasn't sure if the host liked her during the interview? What does Dakota saying that make you think? <laughs> of course I like you. You knew I liked you. Right. Ellen, what did you do to her to make her want to say that to your face on air? And did you notice Dakota's uh, body language? See if you think she's buying what Ellen is telling her. Of course I like you. You knew I liked you. Right, head tilted up, along with tightly pursed lips and hands clasped together, indicating restraint, skepticism, and she doesn't seem to believe what Ellen is telling her. Ellen must have done something mean to her. You knew I liked you. 
You've been on the Did you hear Dakota say, yeah, posed as the question when Ellen said, you knew I liked you? Did you see Dakota briefly looking up and away, remembering back to a memory and then forming that smile of certainty? Doesn't Dakota seem like such a nice, sweet young woman? And we can only imagine what it was like for her to meet the monster of Hollywood for the first time backstage. This is what I'm imagining here. Oh my God, Ellen, I'm such a big fan. Did you just look at me? Don't ever look at me again. Oh my god! What did I do to Ellen? <laughs> no, 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 Dakota. She's always like that, apparently. <laughs> show many times, and, and don't I show like? Did you notice Ellen's hesitation with a slight stammer when she said like? Don't I show like? Yeah, Ellen is surely hesitant because she's concerned that Dakota is going to out her right there. But luckily for Ellen, it came across as funny for the audience because Ellen is the founder of the Be Kind movement. So the audience naturally assumes that Ellen, of all people, of course shows like. Also, the way Ellen said it made it a little goofy, which caused this. <laughs> Yes, audience laughter, which causes the awkward tension to be released and Dakota to give in with laughter. Thank you. Yeah. But I did invite you and you didn't come, so. This time you invited me? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. How do you know? I don't think so. Ask everybody. Yes, Dakota, call that witch out. And look at Dakota. She's not amused that Ellen is lying to her face. Oh yeah, and uh, this isn't the only time that Ellen lied about something like this. We were so offended that you didn't even respond to our invite though. That's not true. It's I didn't. so true. <laughs> <laughs> Ask Jonathan, your producer. Who okay. said you were? I yeah, was invited? Right Why didn't I go? I don't know. Was it, was it? it Oh yeah, I had that thing. She had that thing, but doesn't want to say what it was. But we actually know exactly where she was. Um, <laughs> it was probably in Malibu. That's too far for me to go to. If Ellen didn't remember the invite, then uh, how did she know that the party was in Malibu? And here is where Ellen actually was that weekend. This weekend, I went to Dallas uh, for the Cowboys game. Malibu is at least an hour drive, but going to the Dallas Cowboys game in Texas isn't nearly as far. <laughs> Ellen is such a liar. Dakota totally felt that and wasn't going to let Ellen get away with lying to her face. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. No, I think I do remember I was invited. Thank you. Ellen did this do whatever we want skit in a mall with Britney Spears. At the time, it was funny because Ellen was thought of as being the queen of kindness. So clearly, Ellen was just acting for the camera. However, now it seems to closely point to how she normally acts. Watch. Excuse me, excuse me. We're celebrities. We're celebrities. Hi, we're celebrities. We've got a lot of anger. We're celebrities. Angry celebrities. Angry celebrities. Oh, you know what we should do? Anything we want. 100% discount because she's a celebrity. You know what you should be? Uh, who? What? A celebrity. But you know how much celebrities make? <laughs> what is important in life, and that is money and celebrity. Take it. She's a celebrity. It's okay. No, no, no. She's a big celebrity. A giant, giant amount. She wants to taste it. She's not sure <laughs> until she gets a lot more. And then whatever's in the register. <laughs> We'd like the dimes. I said, Don't tell her that. Because we're going to give it to charity. When I was younger, I was born in the wrong body, which means that I am transgender. Beauty YouTuber Nikki Tutorials comes out as transgender after some idiot blackmailed her for threatening to out her. So she bravely disarms the blackmail by proactively coming out. Ellen invites her on her show. Nikki surely feels that Ellen, who is part of the LGBTQ community, would surely have a lot of supporting words to say or at least empathize with Nikki. But uh, watch this. Hi, Nikki. Hello. So nice to meet you. Oh my God, it's an honor. <laughs> I'm like, can you pinch me? Thank you for letting me be here because I feel like if there's one person to get this message across globally. We would expect Ellen to say something from the heart after she just basically teed it up for Ellen to say something supportive. But listen to how Ellen ends the interview. And you, like no other, know what it's like to come out and just thank you. Well, this honor. You're welcome. Thank you very much for being here. Ellen has nothing to say from the heart. It, of course, doesn't have to be political at all. Just something? Since we would expect Ellen to be able to relate to Nikki coming out, since Ellen at one point came out herself. But nope, Ellen was weirdly cold to Nikki. Now, watch this. Who was it by Ellen DeGeneres? Nou, laat ik zeggen dat er een groot verschil is tussen uh, de wereld uit door en Ellen. <laughs> en dan uh, geef ik jullie het positieve handje. 
Nou, dat wil ik meer weten. Ja, ja, er zijn bepaalde... Kijk, bijvoorbeeld, het is wel heel leuk dat jij wel vooraf hallo komt zeggen en zo. Het is bij Ellen in ieder geval, is, wat ik heb meegemaakt hier en in andere landen, is dat gewoon een hele andere wereld. Het zit gewoon iets anders. Afstandelijke killer. Uh... Tikje. <laughs> maar het is wel een andere wereld. Eurovisie. That's right, Nikki calls out Ellen for being cold and not the person she wants to make you believe she is on camera. Nikki and Ellen have a major commonality of being part of the same community. How did she not even want to hear about Nikki's story? I think Ellen is massively self-absorbed and doesn't really care about other people and just makes you think that she does because it's an image that sells to her audience. What do you think? With quarantine, she lost her multi-million dollar production crew and an audience who will basically laugh at a push of a button. So recently, we not only found out that Ellen is mean, but also not very talented or funny. Don't stare at the sun. <laughs> Don't. It's hard not to because it's there every single day. It wakes you up and uh, there it is right before you, just sitting up there in the sky saying, hey, look at me. I make up 99.86% of the mass in the solar system. That's what it's saying. But the sun is very, very, very bright. My, um, anyway, the sun is very bright. It will burn your eyes. So don't do that. Let me uh, uh, offer you an alternative. Stare at the moon. It's also big. It hangs in the sky. Unlike the sun, it has phases. I went through a phase once. It was called men. Ellen was surely thinking YouTubers get millions of people watching them with just a webcam. Surely the queen of daytime talk can do the same thing. Nope. What's it like being married to Ellen? Uh, she's right here. <laughs> I mean, you've known us for a while. Longtime friend Jennifer Aniston is interviewing Portia and Ellen about their marriage. However, when I saw their body language in this interview, it was obvious that if they weren't already divorced now, they were probably going to get divorced. So I googled it and just as expected, they are rumored to be getting divorced. Watch this part and see if you can pick out any untruthful body language and then we'll break it down. We yes. have like the best relationship ever. Nine years. Nine years. A great nine relationship. Years. Yeah. Did you catch any of it? Yes, there was a lot of incongruency. When we evaluate a situation, we expect the subject's body language, tonality, words, and facial expressions all to be in line or congruent with one another. However, when they're not, they could be deceptive. First, her words. Portia says, like the best relationship ever? We have, like, the best relationship ever. If Portia has been known to say like all the time, that would be excused. However, Portia isn't a valley girl high schooler. This indicates that she's uncertain about what she just said. She also puts her palms up, which indicates uncertainty, along with drastically raising her shoulders to subconsciously protect her vulnerable neck, which here is a sign of deception. Also, she shakes her head no, which is even more incongruency with her words. She's trying to make the public believe that her relationship with Ellen is just the best ever. But relationships aren't near perfect because people aren't perfect. So whenever anyone claims their relationship is anywhere close to perfect, they either haven't been together very long or they're not being fully open and honest with you. Now watch Ellen's body language and see what you think. Nine years. Nine years. A great relationship. Years. Yeah. Look at Ellen's incongruent facial expressions with her pursed lips, serious stare, and nervous wrist watch adjustment when she said, a great relationship. A great Nine relationship. Years. Well, sometimes adjust our watch after telling a lie to subconsciously allow her arms to come together, uh, creating a barrier in front of her body in self-defense because of the subconscious danger we naturally feel from lying. Portia's massive shoulder shrug. She's completely turtling. She does not seem to believe at all what her and Ellen are trying to make you believe. Now here, watch for Ellen's facial expressions. Yeah. Wonderful. No, I yeah. It's and amazing. I, and I know that. Look at Ellen's face. Did you see how quickly she went from fake smile to mouth drooping all the way down, indicating disgust of what she just said? Yeah. That was probably one of the most forced smiles we have ever seen. It came quickly and then fleeted even quicker, going the opposite direction with her points of her mouth pointing down like that. And no creases or squintiness around her eyes, which is typical of an authentic smile. Also, did you notice the nervous leg tapping, self-comforting touches to her leg, and her incongruent head shake at the very moment of apparent deception? Because I've, I'm lucky enough to be witness to it yeah. all the time, and it is... It's yeah. inspiring, and you guys are so good to each other. See that body language cluster of massive shoulder shrug, pursed lips, 
bunching of the face into the nose. Can you guess what that means? If you were to ask, Derek, would you like fast food tonight? An hour to do that? Do you think I would want fast food? It's massively withdrawing yourself because you don't agree with or like what was said. But let's get serious. What, what bugs you about Ellen? <laughs> I mean, there's nothing. There's gotta be something. I no, mean, come on. There's, I mean, there's nothing. There's nothing? You're such a perfect little human, aren't you, Ellen? She's surely terrified of what Portia will say about her and surely doesn't want the public to know that she's not actually this kind little human people see on TV every day. I mean... <laughs> Ellen? She's answering the questions. Oh. Portia, come on, this is something. It's so hard. I can't no, do this. No, I know, especially the um, one. Come on, okay, it's fun. Well, we'll forget about God. it. What really? you? Tell me, I can take it. See how serious and tense she is to hear a fault of hers? Yeah, this says a lot about her personality and also makes sense of what we've been hearing of how Ellen is actually extremely mean. Ellen clearly takes herself very seriously and related to that, can't take criticism. When someone is like that to the extreme like Ellen, they are extremely insecure, are always defensive, and have an extremely fragile ego. Therefore, they will naturally be very mean to constantly defend and protect their fragile self from being hurt by practically everything well i mean one one tiny thing comes to mind okay, okay. <sighs> don't get mad i'm not gonna get mad uh, okay. an extremely fragile ego is actually very common among comedians because they've used comedy as a way to deflect away from themselves and onto others to protect their extremely fragile selves i'm sure you've heard of other comedians who have been rumored to be mean in real life too frankly the more fragile a person's ego the more of a nightmare they are to be around. Ellen's fragile ego is apparently off the charts. Do you remember those curious stories of how normal people aren't even allowed to look at her? Yeah, Ellen's ego is apparently so fragile that she doesn't even want the possibility of normal people looking at her and even possibly thinking negative thoughts about her. She's that fragile. You may be wondering about her be kind messaging and why one of the meanest people on earth would say, be kind in every show and sell be kind merch. Two reasons, it's profit given what's going on in the world. It could be big, it can be small, it doesn't matter as long as it's kind. I really think we need this out in the world right now. And also what's called inoculation. We talked about inoculation in my last video. It allows her to hide her true mean self behind her kindness messaging. So when real life stories reveal that this happy little persona isn't who she really is, people won't be quick to believe those stories because she's supposedly the face of kindness. And if we think about it, it worked. She was on the air for 17 plus years and only now is it being exposed. Only now. It took that long. Businesses commonly do this all the time. Instead of advertising their strengths, they advertise to cover up their weaknesses. Give this video a thumbs up if you think Ellen was mean. Give this video a thumbs down if you think Ellen wasn't mean at all. Now in the comments, what would you do if you saw Ellen in public? Would you look her in the eyes? Would you stare her down? Would you show her your chip nail polish? Let everyone know in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button now because we don't want you to miss out on new body language and investigative videos that always seem to shake up YouTube. And I'll see you at the top.